I'm James O'Loughlin and welcome to the new Inventors. Tonight, we'll see a hammock that doesn't need anything to hang from. Also, an invention that might turn the steamy world of skirting boards on its head. Then it is a steamy world. And a better way of carting big, heavy things around factories. On our panel tonight, please welcome back agricultural and industrial innovator Chris Russell and science journalist Bernie Hobbs. And welcome for the first time, a new member of the New Inventors family. He's a man who's spent the uh, past 20 years exploring the future. He's been a pioneer on the World Wide Web and in many different kinds of new and interactive media. It's a great pleasure to welcome futurist and author Mark Pesci. Thank you. Good day, Mark. What is a bridge crane? It's a crane in a factory that you use to pick up and move big heavy things like elephants or more commonly bits of machinery uh, along a production line. The problem is that they often get stuck halfway to where you want them to go and they're heavy to push. Is this the solution? Production lines are an essential part of manufacture. My Global Track system is a quicker, safer, easier way to move components around the factory floor. With conventional bridge cranes, the end carriages are fixed, which means the entire bridge has to move in a straight line along the tracks. The system is difficult to move and frequently jams. With Global Track, the ball pivot allows movement between the bridge and the end carriage so the bridge can travel at an angle to the fixed tracks. Not only is this system easier to move, it is also less likely to jam, ensuring a smoother production line. Global Tracks design means you can now have a 12 metre bridge. That's the largest manual bridge crane in the world. Please welcome from Highton in Victoria, which is just outside Geelong, Greg Mackay. Thanks, Greg. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. We'll look at the little one in a minute, but this is, uh, uh, this is a big one. With, now, with most of these, well, do you want to manipulate yes, for it? Yes, certainly. If you are sort of uh, wandering along at an angle... Yes, well, the, this unit will... It can rotate, oscillate and articulate. Right. Now... Which means one end can be in front of the other end. Yes. And if that was happened on a traditional unit, then it gets stuck. Well, it won't move as easy. Your standard yeah. bridge moves like that, yeah. but this one can oscillate around and it moves extremely easily. Yeah. And you eliminate sprain and strain injuries okay. to uh, personnel. Can we just demonstrate that on the little model here? Okay. Yes, your traditional one going through like this. Yeah. But this particular one, if you've got the load at one end, it can move off and then the other end or carriage will come along when it's ready. Yeah, right. So it has an, an easy, very easy function. Come, come across and, uh, and sit down. We've got another one up here, I think. Um, Mark, what do you think of, uh, of, of all this? This is one of those inventions that when you see it, you just go, it's so simple and yet it's so profound. It really, I think, really changes the way you look at something that was just previously static and makes it flexible, dynamic. Uh, it moves. I'm looking at it though, and you've added a lot of moving parts to the, to, to the device, and this device gets used in environments which are dirty, which are dusted. Is there going to be a chance that the system will jam up simply because it's being used in a real world environment? You've got your, the ball pivot, and that's uh, protected, and that's, the bottom bearings are greased and sealed, so you, you haven't got a problem there. No. So is there any chance that because you've given the objects that are hanging, that are quite heavy, additional player movement, is there any chance then that an operator could get swung back by a load that's on this because you've given it more play? It's actually the opposite. What'll happen, if you happen to, I've got a 12 metre bridge I've built, and if you shift the load, I noticed the other day I was shifting the load one tonne on a 12 metre span, and the load will go along, the load stops, your bridge is tracking behind, your bridge will swing around and your load stopped. So you haven't got the inertia of the bridge shifting the load. And, and yes. just so, so it's going to be carrying things like car engines, basically. Mm. Yes. Big heavy. In, in assembly factories, mm. uh, production factories, textile factories, 
Wherever you're handling product, this unit, this unit will work. Okay. What do you think, uh, Chris? Yeah, look, I think this is a tremendous invention and really well done. When you put this up in a factory, is it possible, because of the fact that there's some flexibility here, is it possible to actually work on a curved track or does it have to be straight? We're working on a, yeah. a curved track model, yes. Because I think on a production line situation, that could be tremendously useful. Well, we're, we're working on one that can go around a corner. Mm. Which, uh, as I understand, it hasn't been done before. Never been done before. Uh, no, Nor is a 12 been. metre track. Um, Bernie. G'day, Greg. Um, I have to say, I'm not someone who finds large equipment sexy. Well, that's why I made you small. <laughs> I love it. No, um, when you get a good look at it, it's really hard for people who are watching the show to get a sense of how amazing what you've done is. I mean, you can see the movement so clearly, you can see how it all works, and I really congratulate you on taking something so rigid and stiff and just turning it into this amazing um, manipulative piece of work. Now, one of your big selling points is that it's going to reduce injury yes. to workers. What are the, how big a deal is injury in this, in this kind of industry with the bridge crane? Are, are we really talking about a lot? Uh, WorkSafe came and did a check mm -hmm. and that was 1.6 kilos to shift a six metre bridge off that and the old conventional system took 20 kilos. Wow. It so you would expect same. because the load is much less effectively you're going to get fewer injuries? Yes. And back injury is quite common in operating these? Oh, strain mostly. Strain. Okay, yes. so it's going to save money yes, and, and time definitely. off work. And um, and the the other thing, can you retrofit so people don't have to buy a whole new? Yes, you'll notice on the unit over there that we looked at, there's an internal and external track. External being on universal columns and universal okay. beams. Something up. I think it's just ingenious, and it probably should be deployed everywhere. Uh, Chris? Yeah, the implications, I think, for making a, a day's work for, for the average worker a lot easier is tremendous, and I congratulate you on it, Greg. And Bertie? It's really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Please thank the very sexy uh, Greg Mackay. Well done. <laughs> thank you. Tonight's winner will be in the running to be named our Inventor of the Year. Will it be the Anchor Hammock? The click and stick skirting board, or the very sexy, according to some, global track bridge crane. Uh, let's start with you, Bernie. You introduced sex into this. And maybe, maybe talk about design. I have to say the global track, um, because we're talking smartness of design and functionality and ergonomics. And, and yet the hammock is amazingly simple. And yeah. it's an amazing improvement on something we've had for 500 years. And especially the capacity to just, because there's only two points to put it on yeah, uneven yeah. surfaces. Yeah, and this, I mean, the skirting board design-wise, I know it's similar to other things that are around, but the way he can flex around uneven corners and so on, that's new. It's mm. elegant. Very cleverly thought through. What about originality? Originality, I'd have to say those gimbal ends on that uh, on that overhead crane, you know, are, is, is ingenious. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. You know, where, where he's used, the principle we've used in, you know, ship's compasses, all sorts of other places to make it so they, you know, works on there to take all that strain off. Very clever. So I, that to me has got the originality. But bit. again, I have to go back to the hammock for that as well because for years people have made stands for hammocks yeah. but no one's ever thought to move on from the, the heavy solid one. This is a, a portable fold away Absolutely. one. So, mm. you know, it's a great take on it. Both of those, you just look at them and say, well, we've had this, it's not something new, mm. it's yeah. just looking at it and saying, wait, I can put these two pieces together and create something completely different. Now, what about marketing? Which, which one's going to sell? Yeah, well, I, the big question, too, on this, things like the skirting board, mm. you know, depends on how he works with that. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think if he really gets that together, the potential for that is huge. Yeah, but how many people actually use these uh, industrial cranes? Mm. I mean, those are used everywhere. And I've the, got one at home. <laughs> that size. <laughs> any, any medium to large size shop will have yeah. at least one any of them. Any factory with a, um, with a conveyor belt or whatever, a, a production line. And, and you could easily see an insurance company insisting that people install mm. these in order to cut down on worker injuries. And the fact that it's retrofitable, you know, that you're not having to sell an entire new unit is just the genius of it. But I tell you what, when you hit the beach with that yeah. hammock, I, you know, I mean, the, look at the people on the beach yeah. who will want to be sitting there in that, and at the moment there is no option. There is yeah. no other system that will do what he wants so to do. So you think that'll sell? I think for the beach market, absolutely. Finally, what about need? Which, which one of them do we need the most? I think if you divide it into a must-have, a should-have and a could-have, the global track is the must-have because mm. it's such a lot of implications for, for uh, health and safety. Uh, and the other two are definitely nice-to-haves. You know, nice and therefore, to they're, you know, they're likely to be very popular, but for different reasons. If, if you change tools, you change the rest of the world because all of our world is made with tools, and I think the global track really fills that. That's it's changing beautiful. the tools. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> you just said that, but write down and put it in a book. So who's the winner? Look, let's start with you, Chris. Yeah, for me, I think it's going to be that global track. Yep. I just think that's so original and uh, I think it's got such implications. So I think that's for me. Bernie? 
I think the other two will make people a lot happier and make their lives easier, but Global Track for me as well. Well, Mark, your first show, it's, uh, it's, it's low pressure, really. What, what are you going to for? <laughs> I love the hammock. I, I want one of the hammocks. I probably want a couple, but the Global Track blew my mind. It, it blew your mind? Blew my mind. <laughs> the mind-blowing, <laughs> according to now. Mark. <laughs> Sexy, according to Bernie. It's the winner tonight. The Global Track bridge crane, Greg Mackay. Well Greg. Congratulations, Greg. Greg's in the running to be named our Inventor of the Year. If you thought the judges got it wrong, all right, why not vote in the new Inventor's People's Choice Award? Pick your favourite from tonight. Text one for the Anchor Hammock, two for the Click and Stick Skirting Boards, uh, or three for the Global Track Bridge Crane to one double nine nine triple two zero, Or you could say one triple nine triple two zero, Or call one nine zero two double five double two double seven, Or go to our website at abc.net.au slash new inventors. Thanks to our judges. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to the stars of the show, the inventors. Well done. Thank you very much. Thanks for everybody. And let's end tonight with a riddle. What was the American inventor Lee DeForest talking about in 1926 when he said, while theoretically and technically it may be feasible, commercially and financially I consider it an impossibility, a development which we need waste little time dreaming about? The answer? You're watching it. He was talking about television. Good night. <laughs>We know that last week the panel picked David and Janet Golden from Dolby and the PTO made as a winning invention, but what did you pick as the people's choice? There was the Water Genie, the Regal Mini Sulky and the PTO Mate. And you picked the PTO Mate.